Good morning, everyone. I'm Diane Singer, and I'm coming to you from South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church. Due to my work schedule, we had to tape this devotional in order for you to see it this morning. This has been a very hectic, draining week for me and my husband, Brian, and I found myself looking to God's word this week for some energy or spiritual guidance on how to find some. Well, as we all know, God had a different kind of lesson to show me. He simply led me into the book of Mark in a simple four-letter word, rest. At first, I just laughed and said, sure, when would you like me to schedule that in? Did you know that the word rest is in the Bible 275 times in over 265 different verses? I looked some of them up for us, but not all of them. Then I researched what the main theme of the word rest is in the Bible and found that it isn't just something we do for our bodies, our soul, and our spirit, but a form of worship and a way to experience more of Jesus' love for us. It's not just a quick power nap to help us get through the rest of the day or evening. A really deep rest is when we completely trust God and lean into his Holy Spirit, even in the midst of our overpacked, double-booked, crazy lives. Y'all know what I'm talking about between our jobs, our families, our friends who call with emergency or just to hang out, housework, the kids' schedules, church on Sunday, time to read your own Bible and devotions. Oh, and there's that book we would just love to sit down and read. Then someone we love or care about gets sick, admitted to the hospital, or worse. We now have a funeral to plan or go to. Now the week just got busier, right? It all leaves us all looking for rest. Did you know that even God took a day to rest when he was done creating the world? By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Genesis 2, 2 and 3. It even became number four on the list of the commandments. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals or any foreigner residing in your towns. For in the six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Exodus 20, 8 through 11. So as you see, resting was very important to God. It also was important to Jesus. We all know this famous verse. It's come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. And this leads us to the story God took me to. Mark 6, 7 through 11, 30 through 31. In my Bible, <clears throat> it is labeled as Jesus sends out the 12. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the 12 to him. He began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. Now that's Mark 6, 7 through 11. As I meditated on the verses and studied it in a couple different versions of the Bible, God showed me that Jesus didn't send the 12 disciples without knowing that they would have some doors slammed in their faces. People wouldn't listen to them, much less give them food or water. Still, they would be empowered to preach the good news, heal, and further the kingdom of God and be extremely busy while doing it. Does this all sound a little familiar? There would be exhaustion on every front, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And even after coming back home, there would still be people coming and going to hear Jesus. 
That is when Jesus told him a very important thing that we need to pay attention to. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Mark 6, 30 and 31. At this point, they took a boat ride with Jesus to get away. But the rest was short-lived, for when they landed, there was a crowd. And this is when the story of the feeding of the 5,000 takes place with the fish and the bread. Which is another important lesson. But the main thought was the rest wasn't long, but it was enough to take care of the next task. So we know we are supposed to rest, but do we? Or do we feel guilty for taking time away to regroup or recharge? Some feel we may miss out on an opportunity or someone could need us in some way while we're gone. Others feel if they take too much time away from their job, it may suffer. Or they are the only ones that can do the job or task that we do. Jesus wants us to rest with him, where his grace and his mercy can do the recharging and renewing of our body, soul, and spirit. When we go off to that quiet place with Jesus, he speaks to us. He heals us and will show us with tasks, which tasks are most important on our to-do list and which ones can wait for another day. With his help, we will be able to see his plans clearer and come back a little stronger for whatever lies ahead. Don't get me wrong, quiet time is not being lazy, but a wise investment. It's for those of us committed to actively serve Jesus instead of being a slave to busyness and full calendars. When we prioritize rest for ourselves and those we love, we will also discover the joy we thought we lost. So take that day trip or weekend getaway, spend an afternoon watching movies with someone you love, go for a walk or a ride, or whatever it may be that helps to bring you rest. Just make sure Jesus comes with you. The busyness or full calendar will still be waiting there for you when you return. Only you will be rested and stronger and able to prioritize that calendar just a little bit better. You'll also be ready to face any storms of life the enemy may throw your way in the mist. There are several songs on Christian radio right now that speak to this very subject too. So if you're a person that likes music, listen to Just Breathe by Johnny Diaz. There is Just Be Held by Casting Crowns. Rest by Carrie Job and Rest by Big Daddy Weave. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please be with us today and help us to remember to take time to rest. Completely rest in you. Show us how to put the busyness of our lives aside and focus on you, recharging and renewing our bodies, our souls, and our spirits. Give us the strength to overcome the trials of this world and do the things you have planned for us since the beginning. Help us to say no when we need to, recognizing that we don't need to leave. Lead an overpacked, double-book, crazy life. Amen.